In today's video, we're going to focus on the interior components that we have added or continue to add as the exterior topics discussed prior have taken shape. In order to achieve this, we will work in an elevatory format, taking up important items as we move. Now, the objective of this video is to develop a background on the different material systems and mechanics used in combination during home construction so that homeowners, realtors, and intrigued viewers have a better understanding of what different housing options as well as alterations entail. Now, if we commence here at the underside of the footing, we notice that there is a sewer drain at the base of the plumbing stack exiting below the footing at the front of the home. This drain, which then continues on to connect to a main or septic tank on the exterior, is trench four placed and capped soon after the footings are formed and poured. The completion of this stage before the foundation walls is entirely dependent on contemplation regarding accessibility. However, these drains are required prior to pouring the basement slab. The basement slab sits atop a three quarter inch clear gravel, which fills a six to 10 inch gap between the undisturbed soil and top of footing. This self compacted material contributes to the concrete's longevity by allowing space for proper groundwater drainage, as well as a little wiggle room for any subtle earth movement that may occur. The concrete slab in the basement is approximately three to four inches thick and construed of a compressional mix strength of 20 MPA. On this same level, you can see both the hot water tank as well as furnace. Now you try to squeeze in both units and around the same time the roofing has been complete and the exterior finish is being applied. Limited contact with water is of course the desired effect of this scheduling and you don't want to push this stage beyond the boarding of the home because moving these items can of course cause damage to the walls, thus increasing service costs. The hot water system typically begins with water being delivered under pressure through a copper service that originates from a water main. Upon entrance into the home, it flows through a meter before teeing off and creating two separate lines that often run parallel but independent of one another. One supplies the heating system, which allows the subsequent runs to distribute hot water, while the other carries the cold portion directly to the fixtures. The furnace similarly disperses one main duct from the unit, which branches off into smaller circular runs feeding the home's vents, with the difference being there is a return duct that travels back around into the unit after passing through a filter, which allows it to reheat clean air. The heating duct running from the furnace begins as a rectangular frame running in along the enclosure of the joist, which allows cylinder-like runs to extrude from the top of the duct. These longer spans are sized to travel between the joists and interior walls to their desired area. On the return side, the inlets in the wall allow air to travel into the void formed between the studs and drywall and be directed back around to the return duct, entering the furnace via metal sheets that box off the joists. Progressing up the stack, which is also referred to as a drain waste vent, we see different sized pipes connecting to it on multiple levels. The three inch pipe deposits wastewater from the toilet fixture into the soil stack, while the other one and a three quarter inch runs cover all the other plumbing fixtures, including vanities and baths. All these pipes that are three inch in diameter or less are gradually sloped at a rate of at least one fiftieth or a quarter inch every foot to allow the content to be exhausted through gravity flow opposed to fresh water's pressured flow. For each fixture, a vent continues up through the roof line to exhaust odors and gases, as well as preserve atmospheric pressure in the line so that waste flows through smoothly with minimal air gaps, and also does not siphon off water in the traps. Now, in the upcoming short videos zeroing specifically in on each mechanical system, I will cover more plumbing basics like the significance of these traps. However, for this video's concern, by this point in time when the plumbing roughing is complete and being inspected, all their items including HVAC, electrical, as well as carpentry is also complete. Ideally, you want to conduct your inspections for each item around the same time, especially since each item is interconnected to the extent that one's completion, such as carpentry, depends on another's completion as well. Once all these inspections have been satisfied, you can move forward with closing off the walls, beginning with insulation. The temperature difference on the colder surface of a barrier causes greater heat flow from the hotter side, thus increasing dependency on mechanical items like the furnace. By adding insulation, you frustrate this thermal process by means of the increased resistance it contributes. The resistance ratings, or R values on such materials, measure this effect, and the building code's efficiency standards stipulate the correct amount. 
For above grade exterior walls, the minimum R24 makes a standard fiberglass bad of insulation with the corresponding R value pivotal. Since insulation carries such significance, its presence on the interior of a home also undergoes an inspection before the home is boarded. Boarding the home entails screwing half to 5 eighths of an inch thick sheets of drywall to the wood members of the home's frame. The joints between the separate boards are mudded with a drywall compound, covered with a paper tape, and then layered further with the same compound. After these two wider finish coats dry, the joints are sanded to smooth out the walls for the house's primer or undercoat. Now, painting comes just before the plumbing and electrical finish near the end of the home's completion. But before then, we have quite a bit of activity such as the flooring, doors, railing, kitchen, fixtures, and so forth. All of which will be the scope of discussion for the next video. For now, I hope you all picked up something new from this piece, and like always, Thanks for watching.